Whether you're a car technician that wants to troubleshoot the electrical items on your vehicle, or you like to work on electronics as a hobby at home, at some point you're gonna want an adjustable power supply. And I've been looking for one that didn't break the bank and that didn't take too much space on my bench, and I think I finally found one. This is gonna be a review of the Javersity Adjustable DC Power Supply. I'm gonna unbox it on this video and show you all of these features. And as always, I like to remind you that I place a link in the description down below to this unit in case you want to get one for yourself. And the power supply comes in in good packaging and we'll get this out of the way. Looks like we have some documentation and the accessories. Let's start with the power supply. And as far as size, this power supply is fairly compact at eight and a half inches in terms of depth and roughly about six inches tall. And for the width, we got approximately three and a quarter. And for construction, the entire body of the power supply is made out of metal. There are some many ventilation vents on both sides and on the rear of the power supply we have the input for power and also a fan to keep the power supply cool and on the bottom of the unit we have four rubber feet which is always nice to see to avoid damaging the surface that we're going to place this power supply on and also to keep the power supply from sliding or moving around and for accessories we got a set of leads with standard four millimeter banana plugs on one end and alligator clips on the other and an approximate cord length of 18 inches and we also get a heavy duty power cord with an approximate length of about five feet and in the bottom of the unit, we get three four millimeter standard banana jacks. We got positive, we got a reference ground, and then we have negative. And the knobs on all three of them are fully removable in case we wanted to use a ring terminal instead. And on the middle of the unit, we have a power on, power off button, and then we have a full size USB port which can handle up to two amps. Then we have fine adjustment knobs over here. The top one, fine adjustment for voltage. This one, fine adjustment for current. And then we have course adjustment knobs on this side. First one is for course adjustment of voltage. Voltage. Next one is course adjustment of current and we also get an LED indicator to show us if the power supply is working on their constant voltage or if it's working on their constant current. We also get three displays. The top one is a four digit display for the voltage, the middle one four digit display for the amperage and then we have a four digit display for the wattage. Well let's crank the voltage on this bad boy to see what it can do. Now this particular model the SPS 3010 has a maximum output of 30 volts. I'm going to turn both of the course and the fine adjustment knobs. And sure enough, we are able to hit 30, actually a little bit over 31. 0.29 volts but they also have a 60 volt version available and a 120 volt version available i'll put links to all the variants in the description down below but let's also test out the fine adjustment of the voltage for this power supply and let's try to get down to 12 volts which is going to be the voltage that is going to be commonly used for my purposes in car troubleshooting and we're at 11.90 i'm going to switch over to the fine adjustment voltage i'm going to turn this dial and as you can see, I'm able to fine adjust the voltage to get it exactly where I want to, just a little bit more, 12 volts. And now that we've seen the constant voltage mode, let's take a look at the constant current mode. And for that, I have connected the lead set, one to the negative side of the power supply, the other to the positive side of the power supply. And I'm gonna take those alligator clips and short them out together so I can set the maximum amperage desire that I want. And I'm gonna begin with the coarse knob. And for this test, let's try to get to three amps. I'm gonna turn this knob until I get close to three amps. So as I close as I can. Almost there. Fairly close. I'm gonna move over to the fine adjustment knob and turn that one until I get to three amps. There we go. We have selected three amps as the maximum current that this power supply is going to deliver and we are working on constant current mode. And for tracking power consumption of whatever device is hooked up to the power supply, we have the wattage reading right here, which is just a calculation of the voltage of the amps, which can be easily done, but it is convenient to have it displayed right here in real time. And I have connected my multimeter so we can cross reference the value shown by the power supply and I'll begin to turn the fine adjustment off so we can see those numbers in reference to each other. Now it is important to point out that I'm using this power supply for hobby use and personal automotive diagnostic use. However, if you need greater precision and accuracy, such as in a lab environment, manufacturing, or engineering environments, you may want to send out both the power supply and the multimeter to an accredited calibration house to get them calibrated before you begin to use them. But what's also interesting is that this power supply is fairly silent. As you can see, the fan hasn't come on in all my testing and only seems to come on under heavy use when this unit starts to get hot and it wants to cool 
down. Also, I want to show you in here, once I pull this off, this gives us access to the fuse, which is replaceable, and it's pretty clever how they have built it in here. This can be pulled off, and a standard glass fuse can be replaced in here. And for documentation, we get the simple instruction manual that is in English and shows how to use the power supply and the constant current and constant voltage mode. And then when it comes to power supplies, in my opinion, I don't like to overbuy. If I only need 30 volts, either one of these units is going to work out great because I'm going to have greater voltage stability than if I were to pick a 60 volts or 120 volt version where the voltage stability is more relaxed. Now, outside of these two tables, the rest of the specifications are shared across the four different models. And I'll scroll down right here so you can see all of them. And that was a Gisverti adjustable power supply, which is available, as I mentioned, in a 30 volt version, 60 volt version, and a 120 volt version in case you need the extra voltage. I'll put links to all of them in the description down below. Now, this particular power supply does have a small reputation for making a high pitch noise during certain points of use. Now, what happens is that as your age, that ability for us to hear high pitch noises decreases. So how much noise you will actually hear coming from the unit is going to vary from person to person and it's going to vary depending on how they're old they are and how sensitive their ear is to high pitch noises. Myself, in practice, as I was showing you this unit and demonstrating it for you guys, I did not hear any noise coming from it. It was only around 30 minutes of use and under load that eventually I heard some noise coming. Very subtle. I had to lean in and th I thought it was the fan, but no, it is the famous high pitch noise, but it was so subtle, I was not even able to capture it with my microphone to show it to you guys, which potentially could mean that the high pitch noise, it's outside of the range of what my camera microphone can pick up, or it was just so subtle, which is important for me because I plan to record a lot of videos like this one with this power supply, so I did not want a power supply that made a very loud noise. So I think I'm okay with that, and for the price and the small size of it, I think it works out okay. So if you guys have any other questions regarding the Gisverti power supply, please put that in the comments down below. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more cool car gadgets coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.